I hereby call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Directors. It's Monday, March 18th at 7.36 p.m. We're here in room D205 of the Mount Lebanon High School, and public participation is also available via Zoom. Um, before we get started, we are very honored to be joined by students from Foster Elementary to lead us tonight in the school, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, we're joined by Niall Suri Brown, Sammy Young, Danny Brover, Emily Becker, Abe Adler, Anise Suri Brown, Finn Sully, Jacoby Ibarra Ramirez, uh, Isla Sigro, and Principal Dr. Jason Ramsey. Please come up and lead us in the pledge. If you guys want to well, face the flag, that makes sense. <laughs> we'll just have room for pictures later. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> if any parents want to grab photos, stop for a second. Okay, roll call, please. Mrs. Burdick? Here. Mrs. Crable? Here. Ms. Fleischer? Here. Mrs. Gelman? Here. Mrs. Gensel? Here. Ms. Guth? Here. Mr. Hoffman? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Wyland? Here. Mm -hmm. uh, I move that it be resolved that the board approves the minutes of the policy committee meeting held on February 12th, 2024, the discussion meeting held on February 12th, 2024, and the regular meeting held on February 19th, 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? All right. <clears throat> Uh, we are joined today by Paige Drummond and Madeline Marmo to present a report on behalf of the Jefferson Middle School Student Council. Okay, so. Good evening, my name is Paige Drummond. I'm happy to be back this evening as a JMS Student Council Executive Board Member to update you on our Council's activities as, since December. First, a quick update on events we mentioned the last time we were here. Our Giving Tree collection for Sojourner House was a tremendous success. The enthusiasm was so great that we ran out of tags and told students still inquiring about donations, donating that they could bring in any gift appropriate for a child or female adult. Those gifts along with gifts for tag recipients were all delivered on December 22nd. Our holiday ugly sweater contest was also a success. And the will of the winner, Ellie Blanton, chose to donate the proceeds to Girls on the Run, an organization that champions girl empowerment and teaches life skills. And finally, our winter dance was also a, a sparkling triumph. On January 12th, we had 301 6th, 7th, and 8th grade graders dance the night away in our cafeteria. An excellent time was had by all, and we have decided including our 6th graders was a good decision. Following the dance in January, the service committee decided to have a hot cocoa sale. On a Wednesday after school, they sold, they sold hot cocoa for a dollar a cup, plus 25 cents each for toppings. The, sl the sale was a slam dunk. In the end, their sales totaled $310, with a $265.70 profit. <coughs> Those proceeds will be used to fund their next service project. In February, our homerooms hungered down for pop tab bores. The battles began the week after the Super Bowl. Homerooms tried to collect as many pop tabs as possible while sabotaging other homerooms on their team and with quarters. Daily tallies were given to the competition and it worked. To up the competition and it worked. After a week, we collected 1,445 quarters for a $361.25 donation. In addition to the quarters, we have 583 pounds of pop tabs 
Now it will be up to the Student Council to come up with alternatives for donating these proceeds. Those options will be distributed in a Google survey for the JMS students to vote and have the final say. Thank you for inviting me back to speak this evening. I would now like to introduce Anna Maria Rissigi, who will share information about current and upcoming events. Hi, Anna Maria, and I'm sorry because you are not, in fact, the person I announced. <laughs> it's okay. Um, hello, I'm excited to have this opportunity to speak with you this evening. In addition to the project's page shared, we have some big events still in the works. This Friday, we will head out to South Fayette High School. Ten of our eighth grader members and ten of our seventh grade members will venture out to experience the PASC Spring Leadership Convention. Eight of our executive board members will attend as presenters. Back in December, we submitted ideas for workshops. Now we will have the opportunity to present these workshops to students from all over Region B. In addition to presenting and experiencing leadership workshops, we will have the opportunity to hear Kate Garnes, a well-known motivational speaker, and network with other student council members from all over the region. We are looking forward to a leadership charge day that will give us the boost we need to finish the year strong. The Wish We Committee is finalizing their detailed list, and we look forward to letting you know about the random, interesting, and sometimes crazy wishes that are granted during one fabulous week in May. Finally, we were able to arrange our attendance at Student Council Day at PNC Park on May 23rd. This day will be the culminating activity to reward our members for a year of hard work and participation. We will travel with the Student Council from Mellon, and we will look forward to a well-deserved day enjoying the outdoors and cheering for the Pirates. Thank you for having us here this evening. We've enjoyed sharing our activities with you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, now it is time for the Board President's Report. Um, when we presented the 2022-23 audit, audited financial statements in January, I reported that the results reflected a very different financial picture from the one presented to the board and community in May 2023 when we voted to approve the current year's budget. The board and administration committed to understanding exactly what happened to end the fiscal year so differently from the financial position presented last spring and presented that information to the community in a transparent and detailed manner in both January and February. Since that, team, Dr. Since that time, Dr. Fries and her team, with the assistance of our consultant, Pete Camarda, have done additional work to thoroughly understand our current 2023-24 budget performance. During tonight's superintendent's report, Dr. Fries will provide a detailed overview of our year-to-date financials and year-end projections and the administration's findings on current expenditures and next steps to reduce spending. Dr. Fries will also present the proposed preliminary budget for 2024-2025, detailing the budget process, projected revenues and expenses, key areas that are impacting the budget, and next steps in our planning. One of these important next steps is a budget forum to be held here on Monday, April 8th, and the board and administration encourages community members to attend and participate so that their feedback can be considered prior to adopting the proposed final budget on April 15th. The entire board would like to express our gratitude for the hard work of Dr. Fries, the administration, and our district's budget managers, and our confidence and support in the degree of thoughtfulness collaboration, accuracy, and transparency in this year's budget process. Uh, next, I'd like to share some highlights from this month's district inclusivity calendar. Um, as a reminder, this can be found on our website. March is Women's History Month, and March 8th was International Women's Day. We would like to recognize the invaluable contributions of women to our history and society, not to say to our public education system. March also marks the beginning of the month-long celebration of Ramadan. We would like to wish all who observe Ramadan Mubarak. On March 31st, we celebrate International Transgender Day of Visibility. 
in order to bring awareness to transgender people and their identities and recognize those who have helped fight for rights for transgender people. Especially in light of the recent bullying and suicide of 16-year-old Nax Benedict in Oklahoma, we reaffirm our commitment to providing safe and inclusive school community uh, that recognizes and celebrates the di diverse identities of all members, including students, their families, faculty, and staff. Finally, I'd like to highlight some of the uh, news around the district in the area of academics, arts, and athletics this month. Congratulations to Risa Lasek and Sean Stoner for participating in the PMEA Region 1 Choir Festival. Sean placed second chair in the Base 1 section, while Risa earned sixth chair in the Alto 2 section. Both students will advance to the All-State Choir in April. Congratulations to sophomore Soham Dam for qualifying for the USA Junior Mathematical Olympiad. This exam determines the top math students in America in grades 10 and under, and is offered to approximately the top 250 students based on combined AMC 10 and AIME scores. This is the second year in a row that Soham qualified for the exam. Congratulations to the Science Olympiad team who earned third place overall at Penn West Cal U this past weekend. The team earned medals in 17 out of the 23 events and qualified for state finals to be held at Penn State Altoona next month. Um, you have heard this name before if you've attended board meetings, but congratulations to Mount Lebanon swimmer Sylvia Roy for winning gold in the 100 meter backstroke at the PIAA Class 3A Swimming Championship and uh, for setting a new state record. And congratulations to high school social studies teacher and department chair Juliana Slojic for receiving the World Affairs Council of Pittsburgh's 2024 Omler Award. The Omler Award recognizes teachers who, a teacher who does an exemplary job of uplifting youth voice and youth leadership. Ms. Slojic was nominated by students, receiving more votes than any other teacher, and was selected as this year's winner by a committee of World Affairs Council's youth board members. Uh, and finally, congratulations to Mellon Middle School Assistant Principal, Dr. Gina Mahuski, who was one of 15 principals in the region, awarded the 2024 Pittsburgh Penguins MVP, Most Valuable Principal, honored by the Pittsburgh Penguins, Allegheny Intermediate Unit, and the Great Bowl Foundation. Uh, this concludes my report. <coughs> Next on the agenda, we have the superintendent report. Dr. Fries. Thank you, Mrs. Fleischer. So this evening, uh, we're gonna put the slide deck up for you that you can see. Um, this evening, we are going to talk about the 2023-2024 budget. We're gonna look at the year to date um, summary expenditure findings and actions to reduce spending. And then from there, we're going to take a look at the 2024-2025 preliminary budget, which will be broken down into a review of the updated budget process for this current school year, um, fund balance projections, projected revenues, projected expenditures, and then the 2024-2025 budgeting planning next steps. Um, joining me for this presentation will be Mr. Pete Camarda, who is a consultant for us in the area of finance. So you'll notice that he and I will be taking different slides uh, throughout this presentation. So taking a look at this first slide, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Camarda, who will give you a brief overview of his background and then provide some feedback on where we stand as a 2023-2024 budget. Thank you, Dr. Fries. Uh, just to recap a little bit and talk about myself. So I'm now in my 45th year of providing such services to school districts. In 2013, I uh, retired from the school district of Pittsburgh after 35 years of providing serv 34 years of providing service, and I was the chief financial and chief operations officer. Uh, what have I done since then? Since then, I've worked at nine different school districts as their interim business manager, and I've done two special projects at two other school districts. So in that period of time of 10 plus years, I provided services to 11 school districts. I've come in the, you know, I've learned a lot from the varying size of the districts I've been at, and I am uh, quite happy to be here to be able to provide the services uh, to the school board superintendent 
team and the residents of Mount uh, Lebanon as we move forward in developing a budget. On the slide, as you'll see, is presented. We talk about 22, 23 actual expenditures, our adopted budget, and then comparing that, then we have our 23, 24 expenditures date and our projected final ex uh, expenditures as we move forward. You'll see that we have a budget of sitting at adopted budget of $115,137,000, and we have a projected final total of $117,061,000. So there's a, there are reasons for the increases, and we'll, we'll talk about that further as we move uh, through slides, but you have to understand what our process was. Our process was to assess and evaluate where we are at with expenditures to date to look how we would be ending our 23-24 budget. When you're looking at your 2023 estimated final budget, then you're looking at trends and activities that have occurred that would let you uh, provide the data analysis you need to go forward to say you've, you have a high level of confidence that you are projecting correctly for the, the end of 23-24, that then you end up having the process move forward for the adoption of the 24-25 uh, budget and providing the board and the public with a, a projected estimated 24-25 budget to look at. Thank you so much, Mr. Camarda. And to his point about going further into the summary of expenditure findings, um, over the course of the last four months, we've done a really deep dive and completed a detailed investigation of the expenditures for the 23-24 school year. And right now, we are projected to be approximately $1.9 million over the budgeted amount from last school year when the budget was set in May. This is due to salaries being underfunded by approximately $1.4 million. Legal fees were underfunded by approximately $200,000. Dues and fees were underfunded by an estimated $150,000. Tuition costs were underfunded by approximately $2 million. The transportation budget was underfunded by $300,000. Yet through our efforts to review and assess all purchases, we are currently on track to underspend in supplies by approximately $960,000, which prevents a nearly $3 million in expenditures over plan. In January, if you were present for the meeting or if you have watched it um, after the meeting or watched it at home, you know that we've applied many different actions to reduce spending for this school year and to also be more aware of our spending practices. One of the things that we added for this school year was multiple layers of approval required on invoices and purchase orders before payments are made to ensure that it is something that we budgeted for and it is something that is necessary to spend money on. If budget transfers become necessary, a multi-layer approval system is used to adjust budget monies to accommodate unbudgeted requests before expenses are made. A stop spending memo was shared with all staff in February to allow only necessary purchases. Transportation this summer will utilize district transportation to transport for our extended year program rather than using an outsourced transportation method. And then we are continuing to regularly review and evaluate all vacant positions as they become available throughout the district. The next area that we're gonna look at is the budget process that we um, took place or is currently taking place as we prepare for the 2024-2025 budget. This year's budgeting process was extremely rigorous and very different than past practices in that we wanted to ensure that our budget managers as well as our central, level, central office level administration were all involved in a process to provide an accurate budget to uh, the public and to our school board. So the first thing that we did was each budget manager was provided with training on zero-based budgeting to let them know that the expectation of a budget from last year or even the year before that was no longer going to be the case, that we were gonna build from zero and only include the things that were necessary for instruction to occur. Each budget manager was provided with their actual department expenditures for the last three years. This is incredibly important because budget managers needed to know exactly how they spent, where they spent it, so that they could make good predictions and projections for next school year. 
Using this data, they built a budget based on a tiered priority system of one through three, one being the most, three being the least of the priorities, and a rationale for each expenditure. The budget managers met with an assistant superintendent or superintendent, or in some cases, all of us, to review all expenditures that were included in their budgets. And then at these meetings, we had some pretty um, detailed conversations and adjustments were made based upon this meeting. The sheet to the right on this slide is new for us this year in that it allows for the budget managers to not only share with us where, what they were looking for in terms of their budget, but to also provide a rationale for that budget process and for those budget requests. Um, I'd like to say thank you to our budget managers. Budget managers are typically teachers or principals or assistant principals or unit principals, and all of them came very well prepared to our meetings and were ready for a discussion and were very understanding as to where we were coming from in terms of being as um, consistent with budgeting across the, the departments as well as ensuring that we were getting what we needed to continue to have a successful program here at Mount Lebanon. So I'd like to thank them because budgeting is not easy and if you are not somebody that is used to digging in the way that they had to dig in, it was a big task, but they were up for it and for that I'm greatly appreciative of their work. Dr. Fries, I, I know there might be an opportunity for some questions later. Is it okay if I ask a couple kind sure. of in line or would you like me to hold them for later? You can ask. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so relative to um, what what Mr. Cromarda presented a moment ago, and and what you just presented now about, the, you know, looking at a, you know the, our budget to date, and then also beginning the process for next year, it was described, uh, you know, the investigation, a deep dive, uh, a rigorous process. Who who all was involved in in, in those two components? Uh, so for the uh, process of evaluating our current budget and looking at the actuals versus the predicted, it was Mr. Camarda and the team within the business office. And what they used was actual data to make those um, predictions, which we're appreciative of. Um, that is a new practice for us. The second thing uh, in terms of the budget process, Prior to Mr. Kamarda starting, we had articulated what we wanted this process to look at, like we trained the staff on what a zero-based budgeting look like, and then throughout the course of really the last four weeks, we've been meeting with those budget managers. So um, I can let Dr. Davis and Dr. Shulo add to this, but uh, basically there has been meetings almost sometimes every minute of every day where the budget managers are coming in, which would be typically a teacher and an administrator, whether it be an assistant principal, a unit principal, a principal, or in some cases, the director role. And they are clearly articulating what they would like to have in their budget and not like what they need in their budget with a breakdown of priority. And then some really difficult conversations had to happen to ensure that we were applying our process in an equitable manner across all departments and to be heard, right? Because we did want to hear what their thoughts were. And in some cases that helped to better understand what they were asking for. And in some cases, decisions were made as a group that this could be something that maybe we don't need for this year that we could put a pause on and we could do this instead to allow for um, savings. I'll give an example of that. Uh, Dr. Davis and I were in a meeting with the department. There was a request for a, um, for a program, not just for their home use, a refrigerator and a freezer. And we had a conversation about what were the methods that we could use to get what we needed, but to do it in a more cost-effective way. And we sent the person away, and they came back with a much better option for us to consider uh, for this particular replacement, which was a necessity to keep the program going. That's in, in, by sharing that story, that's a great example of the willingness of our budget managers and of our assistant superintendents to have difficult conversations that lead to a positive outcome for everybody. Uh, and I think that these are practices that we put in place not only for this year, but moving forward because, um, you know, to the point about how Dr. Davis and I shared the role of assistant superintendent for elementary, this was another opportunity for learning for our team that will make us stronger and more capable of 
making difficult decisions or being very, very well informed about how we're using our finances. Thank you for, for the answer. And, and it really, it, 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 I appreciate the all hands approach. I appreciate that, that from you, Dr. Fries, to Dr. Davis and Dr. Shulo, that are, are being involved in these meetings and really driving down to a very granular level. Um, so I appreciate the leadership on this um, to take us through this process. I think that that, that is, <clears throat> is important, not only in this moment, but as you described, moving forward. Um, you know, and I also appreciate the you know, cooperation of all the budget managers and all the department leads um, in, in participating in this and understanding um, the necessity of this. Absolutely, and I will say well, there'll be some more examples that we give throughout the presentation of how hard people worked to um, help us to change outcomes, right, and to be more efficient, and those will be shared in some of the future slides as well. Thank you. So the next area that we're going to focus on is projected revenues for the 2024-2025 budget, and for this one, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Camarda. I'm just going to dovetail a bit on the last conversation just for a minute. So as I talked about in my first discussion, I've been in 11 different school districts. I've had varying degrees of engagement with superintendents, uh, assistant superintendents. Um, the level I see here with, with, with Dr. Dr. Fries, Dr. Davis, Dr. Schooler, and you, you're, you, as a board, I don't know how you put this team together, but you should be proud of your team. I've not seen this level in 11 different districts, except for the one I spent 34 years in. But, you know, but this, this level is that um, I, I am impressed to be here, ha happy to be able to help. But, you know, they are realizing what the task is. Then I think it actually, from my observation, trickled down into the budget managers. And, you know, this is a whole collaborative effort. So this isn't just like, you know, you know me sitting in an office, I'm going to just put together what I want to put together. You know, and then we'll see how it falls. You know, th that's not what this is. So I'm sorry I just dovetailed on that because that's my feeling. And, you know, every once in a while I should keep my feelings myself. But you know, <laughs> you know, this one, this one I can't. Um, so on the on the revenue side, uh, we, we're very close to our uh, budget estimate for our revenues from 22-23 uh, to the estimated final for uh, 20. I mean for 23-24, the estimated final for 23-24. You know, there's ups and downs within categories, but you know you're ending up just you know very almost right on top of where you're at. You know, less than half a million dollars. Uh, on the positive side. On the proposed budget side, we'll talk about it as we move forward the, uh, the Act 1 index. So we've uh, built in what the Act 1 index increase would be on our proposed budget for 24 25. Uh, we have some, I've talked with the uh, municipality, we have some growth related to earned income tax that would be uh, realizing going forward. Uh, on the uh, state level, the governor, he made a um, very aggressive proposal with multiple components. Uh, we used what would I would consider would be the, uh, the, the item that's deliverable, which is the, you know, the, uh, kind of a small increase. But then as, if a budget gets adopted and it has some component parts of what he had, you know, as his bigger wish list, then we would be able to add those in after. And that would be a, a positive effect uh, as we move forward there. You know, um, so, so on the revenue side, that's kind of a, you know, uh, just a high-level recap of, you know, where we're at. Uh, the, the biggest issues, you know, we absolutely would need to go to the uh, Act 1 index, and we'll talk about that as we move forward. Thank you. And then For the next area is projected expenditures with Mr. M Mr. Uh, Camarda will also review. So as we discussed earlier, there were uh, issues related to um, uh, budgets and then S and then actual expenditures at the end of 22-23. Uh, we also have issues related to the adopted 23-24 and the projected final for 
as we move forward in the 24-25, you know, we, we know what our workforce is, we know what our contracts are, you know, we can, you know, on a granular level, level project what our salary projection will be. Uh, we've looked at other areas where they, that were recapped earlier in the uh, presentation that were not included in the budget, and then naturally those would be included now. So you would see what our growth is related to our proposed budget into the preliminary 20 for ending the projected final for 23-24, and as it moves into the budget for 24-25. Uh, thank you. Mr. Camarda, on the last column, the preliminary 24-25, uh, were there any anticipated or estimated retirements included in those personnel numbers? Yes, those are all included in there at our uh, step four. Um, I think we typically do step four masters, and those are all included in there as retirements. Okay, thank you. So for this next slide, we're going to take a look at the 24-25 summary of expenditures findings. We wanted to make sure that we could provide to the public where we are right now in terms of what's driving the changes in expenditures from this school year to next. What you will see is that this expenditure, um, total expenditure includes estimated 976,000 for textbooks and resources for our K-5 ELA program. This is something that we have been working on for quite a few years and this year have uh, made a determination for a program that we would like to implement for the district and that would be at cost of 976,000. We are currently working with the vendor to see if there's any way for us to get that to a lower number. Um, that's been an ongoing process. You just have to continue pressing. Um, it also includes $183,000 for six to 12 textbooks, which include a sixth grade science and math book, uh, as well as AP US history. And then based on the adopted 23-24 budget, this includes a 7% increase in insurance costs for ACTIC, which is an estimate based upon increases that we see every year, as well as increases in Social Security, PESERS, Medicare, et cetera, which is a total of $4.1 million. In addition to that, the salary includes all increases based on contractual agreements, which is an increase of $2.8 million. Tuition is $2 million more than this school year using actual data and tuition costs. It includes new a new transportation contract with an increased cost of $259,000. This is an area I'd like to highlight. Um, Mr. Marciniak and his group, along with Dr. Schumann and her group, have done a ton of work around basically bringing that cost down. Um, the original price was over $3 million. Um, and they were able to get that down to 1.68 million. But the most recent work to consolidate and to ensure that we have great routes for our students gave us um, an addition, that additional decrease in cost. So I just wanna say thank you to them because that took a lot of time and a lot of effort, but we believe it'll be the best for kids and that we'll be getting a great service for our transportation. In addition to that, uh, we have reduced contracts and applications at an estimated amount of 150,000. This budget does not include any capital projects. And in terms of capital tech projects, it only includes the first grade iPad replacement, second grade laptops, and sixth grade laptops. Can I ask a question just to clarify on the tuition line item? Is it? Two million more than the budget for this school year, or than the actual expenses? Than the budget. Okay. So the budget for this school year was one point seven, um, and based upon our projections, it is tracking at three point seven. Which is in line with current expenses. Which is in line with current expenses. Dr. Fries, also just to clarify the the section on transportation, uh, just briefly, if you could. Um, tell us any differences that will noticeable differences between current transportation I there was something about routes you had mentioned I think um, we still have to approve that contract. right once we were approved the contract oh, but what it, it assuming that we approve the contract next mm -hmm. month this is going to include routes where there's um, we we run very small routes of students and sometimes we may run because of the small number of students one student in a um, 
transportation vehicle, this would increase the number of students in a transportation vehicle so that we could be more efficient with our delivery. Um, it's a more sustainable route um, and way as well. And I know that that is one of our priorities as, as well as a district, and that allows for a more sustainable approach and utilizing a vehicle for more than one person. Positive change. Dr. Fries, I have a question about the Capital Tech projects. Um, we've sometimes had community feedback about the um, early elementary, first and second grade um, use of technology. And that seems to me that um, not everybody's happy that they get laptops that come home. Would that be something that we could um, put off to a future purchase and not include uh, in 24, 25, or is it imperative that we take care of those tech needs right now? So these are the typical years that we do the replacements. If we put it off, then students may risk not having a device. And in elementary, it's not bring your own device. It's provided by the district, and it could risk us not providing or not having enough devices to provide to students. So from a standpoint of a decision, it would be a decision to have or to not have um, if we don't replace them. I see. So the next slide, we're going to take a look at fund balance. I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Camarda. As we discussed tonight, we're being given you the, uh, it would be the audited 22-23 financial information. So that audited fund balance would be $4.6 million. From our estimated final 23 324 expenditures, our fund balance will become $3.2 million. Thank you. So in terms of 2024-2025 budget planning and next steps, um, one of the next steps the board will have to consider in the month of April is the board policy DFAA, which is the use of surplus funds. It will need to be adjusted to either, well, to decrease the fund balance requirement of 6% because we are under 6% currently. And as we go into the next school year and budget season, that would be the time that we would address this. Um, the administration will continue to examine the budget to find efficiencies and make recommendations to present a balanced budget to the board. March 18th, which is today, is just the board review and proposed preliminary budget. Between March 18th and April 4th, we'll be holding individual or small group meetings with board members to review the budget. On April the 8th, we will have a budget forum and board review and discussion here in this room. On April the 15th, we will put forth a proposed final budget adoption. On May 13th, we'll continue the board review and discussion with the goal of finalizing a budget on May 20th of 2024 for the 2024-2025 um, season, school year. And at that this time, that is all I have for the board for my update. Okay, typically we don't um, have board comment or question after the superintendent's report, but since this is also the preliminary review, the board review of the preliminary, proposed preliminary budget, um, I did want to open the floor if there are any comments or questions from the board. Mrs. Fleischer, I would just say, and I, I know we all feel this way, and you also already spoke of this, but just um, thanking the administration for transparency and and um, all the hard work that they've done, it's an understatement. Um, and there was a third thing. There's probably 13, 30 other things, but I, that, that, anyway, transparency and, and all the hard work and detail that's been provided is much appreciated. Yeah, Dr. Fries, we're, while this information is very concerning, we were really grateful for your leadership and your team's leadership and are really optimistic that the district will return to excellent fiscal health under your leadership and guidance. I did want to underscore one item uh, in, in Dr. Fries' presentation. Um, as much as we've sort of outlined the work of the past several months in order to get to where we are in this preliminary budget and planning. The work over the next month is equally difficult, which is to um, find those additional efficiencies and to make recommendations to present a balanced budget. 
um, for those who were paying attention. The current estimated uh, revenue is about 120 million and the current estimated expenses are about $127 million. So that is the work over the next month before the proposed final budget uh, on April 15th is to make that solid, um, put in the work and make that solid recommendation um, for how to balance that budget. And again, uh, reiterating that we are eager to hear from the public at the forum on the 8th um, for any priorities um, that they would like to share or thoughts that they would like to share about that process. I think it's best to say that um, at this point that the, the board is alarmed and concerned um, and that it's fair to say that um, this trend cannot and will not continue. Um, that we're making specific and very carefully calculated changes in our expenditures, as you've heard from this presentation, but the time is absolutely now and the people that you've elected to this um, role and those that we have um, hired to these roles are incredible and working really hard at um, fixing it. I believe to restore uh, the financial health and community trust um, that is necessary. We're going to see uh, we're going to see some hard decisions made um, for the betterment of the community uh, overall, with keeping um, a top-rate education for all of our students and staffing um, at appropriate levels, and um, paying those uh, those teachers. What we've committed to and leading through this challenge um, is ahead of us. So. Um, Again, yes, I, I thank those who are working so hard, but I commit to the community uh, again and again that we are, um, we're on this and we're going to fix it. Okay, any additional comments? All right, so we're moving on to the area of board member reports. Um, policy committee, Ms. Goose. Sure, uh, this, this day. We are going to be uh, voting on the policy CGDA, which is Conflict of Interest Federal Programs, and CGD, which is Federal Fiscal Compliance. Those are the two policies that we'll be moving forward today. Thank you. Um, PSBA and Board Development Liaison, Mrs. Gelman. Thank you. So PSBA has recently published its State of Education report. And if anyone would be interested in reading the full report, it can be found on the www.psba.org website. As highlighted in this year's report, two of the most significant challenges districts faced were addressing student mental health needs and managing budget pressures caused mostly by mandated expenses, those that we have little or no control over. Um, so that was the, the one one report and then PSBA is also going to be sponsoring the 2024 spring advocacy day on the hill on April 8th in Harrisburg PA Turn and totality <laughs> right applications are open if anyone is interested for conference presenters for the 2024 student leadership conference to be held in the fall October 6th through 8th and then lastly um, I just wanted to put a plug in for Dan Miller's 11th Annual Disability and Mental Health Summit, which will be taking place right here in Western Pennsylvania on April 18th and 19th, with special guest speaker, Governor Josh Shapiro. It's a free event, but people must register on the website. Yeah, and there's a lot of um, a bipartisan group of legislators that will be presenting on topics related to um, mental health and disability, including in public education. So it's a worthwhile uh, event for board learning as well as for the community. Uh, MLFE, Mrs. Gensel. Sure, um, the MLFE board did not meet in person this month. Um, and so really the only updates, <clears throat> excuse me, are that the teacher uh, applications for grants are due April 1st and they'll be reviewed that month shortly after submissions are complete. And as I always um, encourage people to go to uh, the website and purchase 
some awesome newly designed blankets and sweatshirts. Um, it might still be able to be used with our chilly weather for these spring outdoor sports. That's all. Thank you. Uh, municipal liaison, Mrs. Craig. Sure. Uh, so myself and Craig Rella had met, and we had a high-level discovery session uh, about some more collaborative efforts between uh, the district as well as municipality. We're looking at the uses of fields, looking at revitalization, upgrades, um, things of that nature. So you will get an email uh, shortly for our first meeting to start to work through some discovery processes for that. And then the second piece is that the municipality is also working on um, rolling artwork as well as some artwork uptown uh, and they would like to hopefully incorporate our district so i will also be sending an email uh, to you dr freeze and dr davis uh, to talk to the art departments on what that could look like and what that could be and mean for us so really excited so some things are moving forward with the municipality hmm, thanks uh parkway west career and technical center ms johnson Hello. So we had our Parkway meeting on March 5th, and that also coincided with the open house for new students looking at Parkway. It was the largest attendance that Parkway has ever had in their history, and they filled every single parking lot during a horribly rainy night. Our welding students um, shared with us their participation in a welding project, which was published in an international welding magazine for the build out of a large Ferris wheel. And our Parkway students are really using their skills in the real world. Um, and our co-op welding students, our seniors are earning $38 an hour um, as senior students working in welding. And the welding department also received a $100,000 foundation donation from Cotera. And I will share the article with Ms. Smith um, to share with the community for any of anyone who's interested. I'm really proud of our students. They're doing incredible work and they're really gaining some interesting skill sets as they graduate and move out into the working world. Thank you. Uh, Pathfinder School, Mrs. Burdick. Uh, yes, the Pathfinder Board met in February, um, February 21st, and that was my first uh, time in attendance, um, and I was glad to meet the other four uh, district reps and the administration of Pathfinder. Um, some highlights from that meeting include uh, their, financial, uh, their financial report. Uh, they are trending high on expenditures as well. This is not... Um, it's so not only here, uh, there, this is something that we're definitely seeing across the board in school districts and uh, the cost of the cost of everything for maintenance, repair, et cetera, tiles, fuses, all these sorts of things where the prices are up. Um, and that at mid-February's point, uh, the, the financial outlook was already at 84 to 85%. Um, so just to reiterate that um, these types of expenditures are being seen across the board. Um, they also had a personnel report that they are seeking um, to hire a new facilities manager for schools and grounds for Pathfinder and the joint special education schools um, and looking for a succession plan. The person who will be retiring um, has been there for many decades. Declare, he retired several years ago. And, he and just stayed on. That's he, is, he has still committed to one more year with a succession plan that nobody wants to create, I believe. Um, so they do have a capital project coming up, replacing their HVAC, which is fully funded, partly due to the work of um, Ms. Fleischer. And uh, that is the completion of my report. We'll meet again this week. So that was last month's report, and I will have an update after Wednesday. Thank you. Okay, and for Shazda, I have no report as we have not met. Um, so moving on to agenda item three, um, this is comments from residents and taxpayers uh, concerning action items for this meeting who have previously requested to speak. Uh, there were no previous requests. So item four is comments from residents and taxpayers concerning action items for this meeting. Presentations or comments are limited to three minutes. As a reminder, this portion of the agenda is for uh, the action items listed under agenda item six. Uh, there'll be another opportunity at the end of the meeting to provide comment 
on any other issues. So if there's anyone who wishes to speak on action items, please approach the podium. And nobody online from Mr. Stengel. Um, there is no unfinished business for board consideration or action, so we're moving on to agenda item six, new business for board considering consideration and action. Um, all of the matters of new business were considered and discussed at the board discussion meeting, uh, except as noted by an asterisk. Uh, financial items, please, Ms. Gelman. I move that it be resolved that the board approves, ratifies, and accepts the following financial reports. Treasurer's report dated February 29th, 2024. List of bills dated February 15th, 2024 through February 29th, 2024 and March 1st, 2024 through March 13th, 2024. And a list of usable equipment dated March 1st, 2024. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay, uh, just as a reminder to the board, we're doing a verbal roll call. So roll call, please. Ms. Burdick? Aye. Ms. Grable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Goose? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Ms. Gelman? Aye. Do you want us to also record our vote or? No, okay. We're going hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. No. <laughs> Agenda item B, please, Mrs. Burdick. I move that it be resolved that the board approves the AIU program of services budget for 2024-2025 in the amount of $2,263,093 with an estimated cost to the district of $84,950.73. Second. 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 Questions or comments? All right, roll call please. Mrs. Burdick? Aye. Mrs. Crable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Goose? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gilman? Aye. Okay. Next item, please, Ms. Johnson. I move that it be resolved that the board approves budgetary transfers for March totaling $91,700.64 to reallocate monies for instrument repairs, athletic supplies, library supplies, family consumer science class food purchases, paint supplies, masonry supplies, HVAC filters, uniforms, field trip transportation, pool maintenance, plumbing supplies, sewage charges, board dock software and Chromebooks, variations in phone service billing, event scheduling software, increases in maintenance costs for infrastructure services and software and choir music. Second. Second. Okay, um, I am going to ask a question just because this is one that changed from our discussion meeting. Um, so just if there's any additional information uh, that the administration can provide on the added transfers. Good evening, Ms. Fleischer. So uh, when you look at the uh, budget transfer document, we had presented items 2408-01 through 07 last week. Uh, and then starting uh, uh, with 2408-08, uh, there were a number of additional items that were added on. It runs down through 2408-22, uh, uh, and as uh, was enumerated in the uh, uh, in the motion, uh, we are tried to articulate what those items were, were actually for. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? All right, roll call, please. Ms. Burdick? Aye. Ms. Crable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Goot? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gelman? Aye. Okay. Agenda item D, please. Mr. Wyland. 
I move that it be resolved that the board approves the list of personnel changes in the form presented. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay, the asterisk here is just for some additional uh, personal items that were added to the report since last Monday. Ms. Burdick? Aye. Mrs. Crable? Aye. Ms. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Guth? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gelman? Aye. All right. Agenda item E, please, Mrs. Gensel. I move that it be resolved that 22 Pennsylvania Code 339 requires all school entities integrate the CEW standards into the curriculum and establishes a written plan for the development and implementation of a comprehensive sequential program of guidance services for kindergarten through 12th grade and that the board approves that Mount Lebanon School District 339 comprehensive and integrated K through 12 school guidance counseling plan in the form presented to be submitted to the Pennsylvania Department of Education as required before March 31st, 2024. Second. Any questions and comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Burdick? Aye. Mrs. Crable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Guth? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gelman? Aye. Okay, uh, agenda item F is a new agenda item. Uh, the district, just to provide some uh, context, the district and Mr. Rob Goletko have separated by mutual agreement, uh, and that agreement provides for certain obligations of both parties, including ongoing cooperation, a release, and benefits equal to six weeks salary and two months health care. Consistent with the agreement and with our standard practices concerning personnel matters, we will not be providing any additional personnel information. I move that it be resolved that the confidential separation agreement and general release with Robert Galecko is approved in the form presented. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Mrs. Burdick? Aye. Mrs. Crable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Guth? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gelman? Aye. Okay. Agenda item G, please, Mrs. Good. I move it to be resolved that the board approves revisions to policy CGDA, Conflict of Interest, Federal Programs, in the form presented. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mrs. Burdick? Aye. Mrs. Crable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Guth? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gelman? Aye. All right. And agenda item H, please, Mrs. Crable. I move that it be resolved that the board approves revisions to policy CGD, federal fiscal compliance, in the form presented. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Okay, roll call, please. Mrs. Burdick? Aye. Mrs. Crable? Aye. Mrs. Gensel? Aye. Ms. Guth? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Wyland? Aye. Ms. Fleischer? Aye. Mrs. Gelman? Aye. Uh, agenda item seven, the floor is now open for questions or comments from <coughs> residents. Um, presentations or comments are to be limited to three minutes. Does anyone wishes to speak? Please state your name and address and you'll have three minutes. Good evening, I'm Rick Minotti, uh, 115 Abington Drive. I'm a 48 year now retired teacher from this district. Wonderful place to work. Wonderful place to work. For many years, I was in working with the marching band. I taught elementary music. And in the middle of, I guess, 1984, we created the percussion ensemble program. Not usually ever seen at that point in time in a, in a public school. It ended up being extremely popular. It became 
relatively known as one of the premier public school percussion ensembles. Uh, the 40th anniversary is coming up in a couple of weeks, a couple of months here. I am a concerned a little bit about what I'm hearing from my past students and what I'm hearing from the present students. That being that anything before 19, I'm dealing with Alzheimer's here, so also I might miss something, sorry. <laughs> uh, what's gonna be missed is the people who came in before 09. They're being told that nothing, none of the videos, none of that stuff will be shown only from 09 on, which happens to be the time when the present director of the group started. I have my life invested in that. And I made a mistake on something. Some of you know what went on. That's okay. But I was in a deep place that I didn't know how to get out of. One of our former students did a very bad thing in Oklahoma, went to jail for four and a half years for it. And he should. He should. But my problem was, during band camp, I got a phone call. And it was this gentleman's mother saying, will you please go see my son? He's been beaten. He's been raped. He's been all kind of things. Louise Marino was the marching band director at that time. I said, Louise, I got to leave for Oklahoma. And I did. When I got there and saw him, it, I didn't know who it was. I didn't know who it was. You couldn't tell who it was. He was close to suicide. And I was trying to think of something that we could do to keep him from going through with that. And my interest was, well, maybe you can arrange music for our ensemble, because he just had just graduated from University of Oklahoma. And he was an amazing person with writing music. And Mr. And Mahdi, the three minutes has expired. If you would um, wrap up your, your comment. OK. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing is we had to keep that to the time. And uh, I sacrificed the end of my career to keep that going for him so that he's still alive today. I think a lot of you were asked about that. And I wish I'd come to talk to you before because you we kind of destroyed his life, and it doesn't sound much for me either. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your comments, Mr. Minotti. Uh, Bruce Slater from 140 Skylark Circle. I, I just want to commend uh, uh, the previous speaker. I remember uh, going to football games when he was in charge. It was outstanding um, at halftime, you know, performances. It was the biggest cheer of the whole game, you know, and when they were done performing. And, and nowadays, uh, it's not that way. Uh, and a lot of times, they don't even perform at, uh, at the end of halftime. But I miss, I miss those days. Right. Uh, the other thing is, uh, if we're going to go ahead with a project of the uh, stadium, uh, I noticed uh, with distress that the fund balances dropped dramatically. And we've been boring off ourselves for too long. Can't do it anymore. Uh, I think uh, I saw a balance there, maybe 12, uh, 12 or 13 million. Now it's down to six something. And, and yet there's more inflation, more costs, and that number should have been larger. And uh, I would say, uh, in order to uh, finance this uh, potential project coming up, build that back up. Build it. And also, maybe uh, hold back on some of the capital improvements, you know, and build that fund so we don't have to borrow as much. And you know, uh, keep our ratings that way. Uh, also, if it's replacing books, 
can we go one more a year with some of those books? You know, uh, because uh, one, one book last year, uh, uh, I objected to, you know, because I, it was a thousand pages. When I had that class in college, it was probably <coughs> maybe a hundred pages. It probably was better. It was more <coughs> accurate too. Oh, sure. Thank you. But uh, you didn't have to have all the uh, details of all the authors, you know, the um, co-authors, and the reviewers, and and all the uh, all the. Um, there was about thirty-five or uh, maybe of them. Uh, I think I counted. You don't need that in in, 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 a, in a, a, a book because I remember in college. You know, going through a syllabus, a guys trying to write a, a book. We're the proofreaders. <laughs> We're the students. Maybe the first round, but but, um, but um, you know, look at savings you know, of that type. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Slater. Is there anyone else who'd like to offer a comment? Anyone online? No. All right. Uh, before we adjourn, I'd like to announce that the board did meet in executive session this evening uh, for matters of negotiations and personnel. Upcoming public meetings uh, Monday, April 8th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. The budget forum and board discussion meeting in D205 of Mount Lebanon High School and via Zoom. And Monday, April 15th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m., the board regular meeting in room D205 of the Mount Lebanon High School and via Zoom. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second.